if only a small number of donor or acceptor atoms have been introduced to a semiconductor then the impurity atoms are spread far enough so that there is no interaction between donor electrons or acceptor holes we generally assume that the impurities introduce a single level discrete non interacting donor energy states in the n type and a single discrete non interacting acceptor energy state in the p type semiconductor these types of semiconductor are referred to as non degenerate semiconductor and all the formula which you study are usually meant for non degenerate semiconductors if you draw the energy band diagram for n type semiconductor then the fermi level in non degenerate semiconductors will always be between conduction band and balance band since we are talking about n type semiconductor then the fermi level will be roughly here and if we talk about p type semiconductor then the fermi level will be closer to balance band but those semiconductor which has been doped to such high levels that the doped atoms are an appreciable fraction of the host atoms then the distance between the impurity atoms decreases which allow donor electrons to interact with each other when this happens donor electrons in n type semiconductor start interacting with each other the similar phenomena can be observed for acceptor holes in p type semiconductor when this happens the single discrete donor energy level will split into a band of energies as the impurity concentration further increases the band of donor state widen and may overlap the bottom of conduction band or top of balance band overlap occurs when the impurity concentration becomes comparable with the effective density of states for n type semiconductor when the concentration of electrons in the conduction band exceeds the effective density of states nc the fermi level lies within the conduction band similarly for p type semiconductor the fermi level will lie somewhere in the balance band such type of semiconductors are called degenerate semiconductors 